went ahead to make my Sebrachis, when God went ahead to actually begin the process of building my Sebrachis, he did it by taking out the broken pieces and the sparks that had fallen down into nothingness and really the tohu, which is uh, the source of impurity, the source of evil. Again, all these are details that can actually be found. There's a, a little book that, that I actually wrote up to explain this in more detail for those who want to follow up called Holy Sparks. And you can download it from the site, the Gula Barachimim site, on this particular part of the, of the uh, seminar, and uh, go into more detail if you want to. But the main thing is, when the Kodesh Baruch when God made my separations, every day he pulled up broken pieces, and he pulled out Holy Sparks. And he pulled up broken pieces, and he pulled out Holy Sparks. That's what he's doing the entire process. He's doing a separation process. In the beginning, the Holy Sparks and the broken pieces were like the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was a combination, a, a tarovus of good and evil, mixed together when we call the klipas. The klipas literally means a peel. But it's a spiritual entity that, like a peel, blocks the light of God from reaching people and therefore lessens their connection to their creator and, and lessens their sense of spirituality as well at the same time. So the klipas represent the force of the creation there to challenge us. The, the father, so to speak, of all the klipas is the satan, is the sitra achra, whatever you want, malach what you want to call him. It's all the same thing. He's there to make evil possible, to make free will possible, to make man possible, to make going to the world possible, because really that's what's the source of the world to come, is our doing that which we have to do to get to the world to come. And this world, as the rabbis point out, is only a prosor, it's only a corridor to the next world. That's what we're taught, that's what we're told, and that's the reality. What's the avoda? What's the what's the malacha of, of life in this world? So it turns out that that when, when God finished making creation, He pulled in all the sparks necessary each day for each specific creation that He made. He pulls up more pieces and more sparks, more pieces and more sparks. Day one's over. Day two is over with these sparks, and day three these sparks. He goes to day six and makes man again using sparks and broken pieces till finally man's created. And what? There's a few sparks left over. And there's a few broken pieces left over. And, and what? What's supposed to happen now? So God says, that's your job. I did all this to get creation to this level, to this point. It's your turn now, says God. You are responsible from this point onward to pull up the remaining sparks and the broken pieces, be mushly, complete creation, right? Bring it to it, its, final, its final, you know, you know completion and, and level of perfection, you will be a partner with me in that process. You will earn your portion in the world to come. You'll usher, you'll usher in the Messianic era. And everything will be the way it's supposed to have been and will be, with Hashem, hopefully not too long from now. Hopefully, Barachim. So, that's, that's the whole point of creation. It's just using up those final sparks. That's what's written in the Sefer Kabbalah. That's what happens in everyday life. How do we do it? Well, everything is made up of sparks. When you eat something, it's got sparks inside of it. The nutritional value of something is the amount of sparks. Yeah, it's got potassium, it's got carbohydrates, all these things. But the essence of nutrition are the sparks. Why? Because your body and your soul are very different from each other. They actually don't like each other at this point in time. They're, they're, they struggle against each other. It's not even so much they don't like each other, as much as the body came from the ground and that's where it wants to go back. From dust you came to dust you will go. Every day, it's driving itself back to the ground. And the soul, you know, came from Shemani. It wants to go back there. So it's like it's like two prisoners who escaped from prison, so to speak. And, you know, one guy wants to go to the city, one guy wants to go to the country, but they're chained at the ankle. They're pulling at each other in different directions. So, you know, when they separate, that's death. Death is the separation of the soul from the body. That's what God does. He pulled, the Gemara says, God pulls back the soul. What's left behind is the body, and eventually will decay. Health is based upon how close the soul is to the body because the soul is a spark of divine light and as it comes closer to the body, it gives off that divine light to the body and it makes the body healthier. Aging is the process of the soul slowly moving away from the body. So if you can somehow maintain the body and soul like Moshe Benu did, as the Torah says, the entire life and they don't separate, you can maintain your age entire time. Maybe physically you might still grow gray hair and all that beards and all that. It didn't have to be the way the Gemara says. Originally, Abraham and Yitzchak always at the same age. So Abraham dove him for a different situation so people respect the elderly and know who's who. But, but basically, it's all 
based upon the soul being close to the body. Now, now, but the soul doesn't want to be close to the body. Ah, so you need a, a third element, which the Leshem explains is called the Selim. It's kind of a spiritual glue made up of the Tzotzi Kedusha. And what happens is when you eat food, for example, or anything, any mitzvah, any process by which you can get the Tzotzi Kedusha into your system, then basically this, this increases the bond between your body and your soul and therefore gives you more life. So, of course... Nutritional value is going to be based upon how much life it gives to you. But it's not going to be the physical elements and the vitamins that are going to give you the life force. They're just clothing. They're just like, like a car is to a, a driver. They're just ways to get the Nitzotzi Kedusha into your, into your system, whereby it's broken down and separated out, feeds the connection between the body and soul, and you will live a better life. Likewise, a person who eats unhealthily, who does not eat a nutrition, does not have a nutritious diet, so they're they're limiting the amount of nitzotzi kedusha coming into their body, and therefore the connection between body and soul is going to be weak, and the result is going to be the body's going to decay, the body's going to get sick, and this is going on all through life. Everything we do, you make money, it's got nitzotzi kedusha, and you spend the money, you're releasing the nitzotzi kedusha. Everything, by definition, that lives and functions, and does anything is consuming holy sparks. That is the basis of all creation. Whether we know that, whether we don't know that, you know, but that's the way it works. The same way, for example, that gas that goes into the gas tank, you know, how many people actually watch the gas go in and look inside the tank, because you can't use it anyhow, and, you know, and then look at a little meter and say, watch it burning up. No, you fill it up, basically, and then you drive, and you drive as long as you can. A little meter says, you know, down to almost empty, and before you get there, you just put more gasoline in, and you just drive some more, and it's like, you don't even need the gas, it seems like, because you're always running, 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 until, of course, you run out of gas, and you realize, of course, you need the gas. So, so we don't think about these things, but that's, that's what's going on. And as the lesson points out, the most effective way to be able to use Apnatsotzi Kedusha in, and I say effective, meaning the, 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 the way to maximize the amount of spark you're actually using up is not so much based upon how strenuous your life is physically. You can have a very strenuous physical life and not use up any Natsotsi Kedusha, and yet have a very non-strenuous life and use up tremendous amount of Natsotsi Kedusha. So how does that work? So the same way, for example, that a car works according to certain principles, and therefore, you know, according to those principles, if you're going uphill, it consumes more gas, you put your foot in the gas pedal, it consumes more gas because of friction, more energy, all these different things that we have to overcome. Likewise, Natsotsi Kedusha also function according to certain rules. And it makes sense that Torah and mitzvahs, they're a manual. They are a path in life designed specifically to maximize the amount of Natsotsi Kedusha you're using up. And you want to maximize them because it's like saving money in a bank account. All the spark that you redeem personally, you bring it to creation, and you fulfill and redeem and send them back. You, you separate them out from the, the klipas and elevate them back to where they're supposed to go. That becomes part of your portion of the will to come. You're building your portion of the will to come based upon the amount of sparks that you redeem. So you want to maximize the amount of sparks you're taking out. So therefore, Torah and mitzvahs become the ideal way to, to take out the sparks from the klipas, send them back to Shemaim, and make them part of your, your, your portion of the will to come. However, they're not the only way, because we know there's other things in life. But they're the most effective way. What's a less effective way? Well, not as less effective. It can be very effective, but not pleasant. And that is all the suffering that goes on. Because ultimately speaking, the greatest combustor, so to speak, of Natsotsi Kedusha, the greatest methodology we have available to us to, to draw the sparks out of the klipas, the, the reality of impurity, and to redeem them, and send them and elevate them back to where they're supposed to go, is a concept called Mesiris Nefesh, self-sacrifice. Now, it's not just self-sacrifice. Mesiris Nefesh, for money only, for the sake of accumulating money, is not really called Mesiris Nefesh from the Torah perspective. It does not use up many Natsotsi Kedusha. But Mesiris Nefesh, to do the right thing, to do the will of God, to, to, uh, you know, to live on a higher spiritual level, any self sacrifice that a person performs specifically for the sake of trying to enhance the relationship to God to improve the world spiritually by definition automatically uses up and consumes a lot of Natsotsi Kedusha by definition and, and not just that but enhances the process 
So we talk about that it says Zoich Achishana Lo Zoich Bita. It means that the people, the Jewish people, are Zoich. I mean, the Jewish people run a course of life that, by definition, maximizes the amount of the Tzotzik Kiddush being brought up because, as it's explained in all the Sforim, the Shiach comes the moment the last spark is out of the klipos, and then the evil disappears completely, like smoke, like it never existed, because evil feeds off the Tzotzik Kiddush too. There's only one source of life in creation. The same way, for example, that uh, two people in a car. One person is going to use his car to deliver food to the needy, and one person is going to use his car to drive to the local bank to rob it. And they both need gasoline exactly the same time. They both have the exact same community. So what do they do? Is there like one gas station that's all white that says, good people fill up over here, and the bad people go to the black gas station? You know, and it's a different type of fuel altogether. You know, one's black, one's white. You know, no. The guy who fills up his tank to rob the bank goes to the same gas station as the Tzadik who fills up his tank to deliver parcels to needy people. Exact same thing. The gas is neutral, right? It's, it, it, it's got the potential to be used for good or for evil. Likewise, the Zohar explains that, that, that evil, the Sitra Achra, has no independent source of life of its own. That would be epicorsa. That would be heresy. That would be Avodah Zohar. I don't worship because that would imply... There's something that can give life, like, like, like God gives life. Only God gives life, as the Gemara said. And, and, and Hashkafa tells us, right? Only God gives life. So if God gives life, it means he's thinking the good guys are the bad guys, right? The good guys get whatever they have to get to do, whatever they, to live and to do mitzvahs and all that. And the bad guys get whatever they have to do to, to be able to survive, to be able to make evil possible that people can do good or evil and make that moral choice. So the Zohar says that there's a certain amount of Kedusha that goes to the Sitra Achra, to the side of impurity, to keep it going. And as long as it's kept in balance, the world is not a bad place, but rather it's filled with free will choices. But, you know, creation marches towards its ultimate perfection. The trouble is when that balance is upset. To maintain that balance, as the Zohar points out, that we pushed a goat off the cliff on Yom Kippur to the Sitra Achra, to give him his due. There's a certain Kedusha involved in this, and he got his kedushas filled. Now, we make a bruch on Tis Yadayim, before we have bread, we're supposed to raise our hands on the, when we say Hashem's name, Baruch Hashem, because the kedusha being drawn down through our hands and our body by making the bruch, especially when we say the name Hashem, so it's going to feed the wrong side. So we take it out of the realm of the klipas, where they can't get to it, to protect it. However, it says, by my machronim, the, the water we use to wash our hands after we eat a meal before benching, we allow it to run to the floor. We, it runs off our hands. And also, for example, leaving a cemetery, all these things as well, because the Kedush in that is meant for the Klippus to keep them going. But that's what God himself designates has to go to them. And, and they're able to, to, you know, to benefit from that as according to the divine plan. The problem is if we feed the Klippus more than they're due. That's the problem. And, for example, making a brook in a bathroom. What's the problem with making a brook in the bathroom? God is everywhere. You want to eat this apple, you're in the bathroom, and you can't get out, you're locked in there for some reason, you're hungry. So you want to make a brook in the bathroom. What do you do? Right? Well, you reason to yourself, look, you know, God is everywhere equally, as we said before, and that's why he's called him a cult. He's called the place, because it's everywhere equally. It's in the bathroom, too. But you can't. Because God has designated the bathroom on impure places, unclean places, as places to, for the klipus, for the side of impurity to exist. And therefore, to make a brocha, to generate kedusha in an impure place, is to literally hand over that kedusha to the side of evil and strengthen them and make them stronger. And that's dangerous, because that could destroy the world. We see that. The world has gone through periods of time, World War I, World War II, and all kinds of wars and dictators and you know, we've seen what evil can do in creation. Where does evil get the koyach to do that? Well, it's feeding off Kedusha, the Tzotzi Kedusha. Where is it getting the Tzotzi Kedusha? Well, it's getting it from Hashem. Now, but Hashem only gives as much as they need to survive, not more to destroy the world. That's not, that's not part of his plan. So where are they getting it from? Somebody's feeding them, right? Do not feed the klipas, says the fence, on the, the sign of the fence. Someone's sticking food to the fence over